Recording Audio. First, select the track you wish to record onto. It's a good idea to give the track a sensible name if it doesn't already have one, as by default the track name will form part of the file name. The next step is to select an input. Click on the input icon and choose from the list of friendly alias names you set up in the settings page. The type of input you select determines the type of clip that will be recorded. In this case I've chosen an audio input. Once selected, the input can be record enabled by clicking the R symbol. You can now check your input level using the meter in the properties panel and can start recording using the R hotkey or by clicking the record button. Recording can be stopped with the space bar as well as the stop button. While recording, the fast forward and rewind buttons are replaced by handy abort and abort and restart options. To enable the click, press C and click the BPM display if you need to change the tempo. Counting can be specified via the click track menu. To automatically punch into a certain section, position the two markers and turn on punch. To record in loop mode, turn on loop instead. You can now record continuously as the backing loops and your takes will be stacked up within the same clip. The best take can then be chosen from a list via the plus sign in the corner. If you need to record multiple inputs at the same time, simply select and enable them on several tracks. To record all your inputs, create extra tracks if needed via the Tracks menu, choose Assign all inputs to consecutive tracks, then use Alt plus R to enable or disable them all together. The big input meters are extremely useful when setting gain levels for a multi-track recording such as this. You can turn this on via the options menu or by pressing Ctrl, Alt and M and the entire track lanes will then be used to display input meters. If you are recording a live concert you may wish to enable safe record mode in the options menu. Now the recording can only be stopped by pressing Ctrl, Shift and S at the same time. Various options are available in the Properties panel when an input is selected. The Treat as Stereo Pair button determines whether the resulting audio file will be stereo or mono. Be aware that pressing this button will either cause two mono inputs to disappear and be replaced with one stereo, or vice versa, so you may need to reassign the input afterwards. To its right, we have an Enable End-to-End -end button. This determines whether the audio signal is passed through Traction's mixing engine while recording. If you have some other way to monitor the recording, such as a hardware mixer, or zero latency monitoring on your audio interface, you will need to turn this option off. Now you won't hear anything from this input unless you first record it as a clip.
turn it on if you wish to monitor the recording through Traction's audio engine. This will result in some latency, which might be noticeable depending on your drivers and the settings you use, but will allow real-time filters such as compression or reverb to be applied non-destructively, perhaps to provide a singer with a more polished sound in the headphones while tracking. The input gain field just below allows the recording gain to be adjusted, but I would usually recommend that this be left at 0 dB as you will get better quality results by adjusting an analog input gain on the mic preamp or channel strip instead. The trigger level field allows a threshold level to be set. If this is set to anything other than minus infinity, recording will not start until the threshold level is exceeded. The time adjust field allows the timing of recorded audio to be adjusted to compensate for your overall system latency. If this is not set correctly, overdubbed parts may end up slightly out of sync with the backing. Traction will determine the correct setting for you if you connect an audio cable from an enabled audio output to the selected input and run the auto detect function. Select the output you have looped back to your input in the Output Device menu and click Run Test. Traction will play a short series of test pulses, measure the total system delay and set the value of the time adjust parameter accordingly. If you have a single multi-channel interface it is probably safe to use the same delay setting for all inputs. But if you have several devices slaved together in some way, you may need to repeat the test for each. Moving to the right, we have various record mode options. The default mode, Overlay Newly Recorded Clips onto Edit, will simply add all recordings to the track and will stack up multiple clips if you record over the top of existing ones. Replace old clips in edit with new ones will non-destructively delete sections of old clips if you record new clips to the same track. Finally, Don't Make Recordings from this device allows audio to be monitored through Traction's mixing engine without being recorded at all. The file name field underneath determines Traction's recording directory and its file naming rules. While this field can be used to specify exactly the path used for each recording, by default it contains various wildcards which allow the record path to be automatically set to the current project directory and the file name to include the name of the edit, the track name and then the word take followed by the take number. If you wish to include the date in the file name you can add the date wildcard. And if you don't want the word take in every file simply delete it. A list of available wildcard terms can be viewed by enabling the pop-up help option with the F11 key and hovering the mouse cursor over the field. And the reset file name button will restore the default setting. File format allows you to specify whether you record WAV files, AIFF files, Sonic Foundry Wave 64 files or compressed FLAC files. Wave 64 files have a 64-bit header which means they can be much larger than conventional WAV files, 
So this is a good choice if you need to record several hours of continuous audio without stopping. FLAC files may be a good choice if you are short of drive space, however, as they use lossless compression to reduce the file size without affecting the audio quality at all. WAV, AIFF and WAVE64 files can be recorded at 16, 24 or 32-bit resolution and FLAC files can be 16 or 24-bit. Different inputs can record at different bit depths simultaneously but if you don't need to do this, leave the Use the same properties for all devices button turned on so you only need to set up one input and the rest will match. The sample rate of the recorded audio is determined by the current setting of your audio interface drivers. If you change this setting for different projects, you should take care to check it is set correctly before you start recording. Traction will happily play back a project that was started at a different sample rate to the current driver setting because it will sample rate convert the existing audio behind the scenes and play it back at the correct speed but any new audio you record will now be at the wrong rate. File names for recorded audio can be viewed and edited via the View Source Info button when an audio clip is selected, and all your recordings will be listed as items in the Recorded Audio folder of that project.